want an exposure to a market more or less. Everything they need in one place. We're the world's foremost authority on ETLs, advisors and institutions. Welcome to Morningstar. Today I'm going to be looking over the macroeconomic and market performance of some of the key global economies with Jose Garcia Zarate, a Morningstar senior analyst and economist. Jose, thanks for joining me. Thank you. So last time we spoke was three months ago, and we were talking about the Eurozone in particular, and you reeled off this long list of potential risks that could weigh on the economy. What's changed in those last three months since we spoke? So what's changed is that those risks have actually materialized. And what we are facing now is a potential uh, um, situation where the Eurozone may actually uh, fall back into recession. Uh, Germany is actually a problem now uh, because the slowdown in emerging markets is casting a dark shadow over the export potential of the German economy, which is you know, the, 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 the key engine of, of, of uh, the German growth. Uh, so it's no longer just a case of uh, peripheral uh, economies versus core, it's actually the whole area actually suffering uh, from uh, uh, global trends. And, and so obviously Eurozone and UK have close trading ties and, and Germany in particular. Yes. Is this the R word, the recession word that you've just, just named there, is that potentially going to start being coming back into the headlines for the UK as well? Well, there, there is a worry uh, that uh, uh, anything that happens in the Eurozone will obviously have an impact on the UK because of the, of, of the, of the links. I mean, no, no, no economy is isolated anymore. Uh, the, positive aspect, inverted commas, of the UK is its strong reliance on, on the domestic uh, demand side of the equation. And that's, that continues to do uh, fairly well. Uh, the labour market in particular is, is, is very resilient. And uh, the uh, consensus is that the UK, even accounting for a potential downscale of growth expectations in the Eurozone and globally, will continue to uh, top the, uh, the growth league. Uh, for this year and next. Okay, so there's some definitely some negative news around Eurozone, but it's not all doom and gloom for the UK. But if I was to push you to sort of name a key theme that you've seen in the last three months since we last um, did our economic review, is there one thing that you could would highlight? I think that uh, we've gone from uh, highlighting uh, risks very specific to uh, regions such as the Eurozone to be concerned about the global economy. We're talking about the Chinese slowdown, we're talking about the American economy doing relatively well but sending mixed signals that, you know, that concern uh, uh, investors. Uh, so it's not no longer a case of specific regions. I think we're actually talking about the global economy now. And so what does that interdependence, that connectivity between the global economies mean for the investor? What do they need to be aware of over, let's say, the next three months before we next speak? I think uh, it's pretty obvious that you know, growth expectations have been uh, downgraded across the globe. And that's been reflected in the performance of the equity markets uh, so far in October, which uh, they have, you know, it hasn't been much, that's been pretty negative, actually. Uh, but amongst all this negativity, uh, there is uh, some reason for, let's say, hope. Uh, because there, there are potential solutions out there. Uh, uh, and it's just a question of uh, uh, sort of like waiting, I'm afraid, to see whether the, the, the interested parties are willing to put those solutions into place. So, so for example, in the case of the Eurozone, uh, if the export component is not uh, responding uh, that that well, obviously that needs to be substituted with something, and that's domestic demand. So we need perhaps Germany to be more flexible about uh, uh, s stimulating uh, consumption and, and domestic investments. And, and that's going to be what we will be looking uh, for in the next two, three months uh, to see uh, whether that actually uh, takes place. Well, we'll obviously be watching that very closely over the next three months and we'll talk again in January when we'll be able to look back, we'll have a better idea of what's been going on and, and hopefully you'll be able to tell us that early 2015 brings some more reasons for optimism. Well, hopefully. Jose, thanks very much for joining me. Thank you. For Morningstar, I'm Holly Cook. Thanks for watching.